cleanser and the toner, but you don't have to rinse it off. Okay. okay. Welcome everyone. We are so excited to be here for Style RX. Looks like we've got Amanda and Susan and Mary and Cindy. So far, we're so excited. Um, I want to introduce Nicole to you. And if you guys can hover over her picture, it says Nicole. You can pin her video so she'll stay right in the center. And that way you'll be able to get all the up close information from her. But Nicole has been um, a friend and client of mine for over 14 years. I met her just out of high school, actually, and now she is a mom of three beautiful children. She's a business owner, she's a makeup artist, and she also, you're gonna wanna hang on to the last few minutes of this because she is now also a plasma pen specialist. And you may have not, you may not have heard of that. So she's going to tell us all about that, but it's like a natural alternative to Botox. So, so she is all things face and she's absolutely beautiful. Her and her mother have supported my business for 14 years. And so she is a mascara makeup artist. However, she is going to give you tips and tricks that can be used with any makeup that you use. Um, and so we will allow some time after for some Q&A. And Rebecca's also here, so go ahead and wave to everyone, Rebecca. Um, we love this collaboration and we are so honored to have Nicole join us today. So Nicole, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Feel free to introduce yourself and then go ahead and just take it away. Hey, thanks so much for having me, you guys. I'm so excited to be here. And I was super flattered that Amy and Rebecca asked me to come. So with that being said, I think Amy kind of covered everything about me, but let's just jump right into makeup. So makeup is super important. It can change your whole attitude. It can change your whole day. Um, I don't know how many of you have lately, obviously with COVID, everyone's probably waking up in the morning and saying, I have nowhere to go. I don't need to do my hair. I'm not going to put my makeup on. I'm <laughs> not going to do anything. But honestly, you guys, if you take five minutes and just do a quick face, I think this makeup this morning only took me seven minutes. So if you take five minutes, do a quick face, you guys, you get laundry done. You, you get so much done. You have your dinner planned. So anywho, take some time for your makeup because it makes you feel better. With makeup, you want to make sure you're getting the correct color for your skin. So getting the correct uh, color match, like if you're going to a beauty counter such as Sephora or um, Ulta, I know it's kind of embarrassing or it's hard to ask somebody for help um, when you want a color match because nobody wants to sit in the chair and take their makeup off and have everybody watch you get your makeup done. So the easiest way to do a color match is not on your arm not on your chest, not on the back of your hand. You're going to want to take three fingers and I always give myself three choices. So if you take three fingers and you're going right here at your cheekbone and you're going to make a swipe with these three fingers and go down, you'll be able to get the best color match for your skin and go matching to your neck and your chest as well. And my chest right now is super red because I'm super nervous. <laughs> So obviously it looks a little funny for me, but it doesn't normally look like this. So make sure you're getting the best color match for your skin. Otherwise it's just going to, it's really not going to look that great. Um, all right. Next one for changing of seasons. So obviously in the winter time, you're a little bit lighter. So I already switched. Uh, I've already gone down a shade because um, I haven't been in the sun very much. So making sure you're going up a shade or down a shade based on seasons is super important as well. Um, contour. I don't know how many of you are using contour or know what contour is or how to contour, but if you haven't done it, you should really try it and invest in it. I think every beauty line out there right now has a contour system. I know even CoverGirl and like Revlon, they have some contour sticks that you can buy. Walgreens, Walmart, whatever. Um, so contour is meant to give your face dimension. So you already have natural shadows on your face, but the contour is going to enhance those features. And I like to think of it as a little liposuction for your face. It gives you like a little lift on your face. So you're gonna put it right here underneath your cheekbone and you're gonna go to about the corner of your eye 
not any farther. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a big brown spot on your face. So it's lifting those cheeks. Uh, you're going to blend it out well. For those of you that have tried contour and you're like, I hate it. It's too hard. That means you're not doing it right. So try it again because it's super easy. You're also going to want to apply a little bit of contour up here on your forehead. If you have a wide forehead, you can help bring that focus back to the center of your face, which is where everything should be. Um, if you have a longer forehead, it's gonna do the same thing. So just bring it down and make this your center point on your face. Next one is blush. Everyone naturally has pink cheeks. So when you're putting your all over foundation color on and you're not adding blush or contour back into your face, you've just lost all the life in your face. So adding a little bit of blush is just brings you back to life and you, your face is not one dimensional. It's not flat. So add the color back in, add the contour back in you guys, and you, it makes a world of difference. So blush is much needed. Um, blush colors, it's kind of the same thing with foundation colors. You can go more pinks and more reds during the summer. And then in the fall, you can bring them darker and, you know, tone them down a little bit, go a little bit more neutral. So try out the blush if you haven't and you're not doing blush yet. Um, another thing I want to talk about is eyeshadow. So for anyone who has maybe a hooded eye, like I have a hooded eye, when you're applying your eyeshadow, try applying it with your eye open. That way you're going to see where the color is actually being placed. Otherwise, if you're applying your eyeshadow when your eyes are closed, you can't see. So then when you open your eye, you're like, well, where the heck did my eyeshadow go? But if you're doing it when your eyes are open, you're gonna bring that all the way up to your brow bone for your color. And you wanna keep your darker eyeshadow colors out here on the edges. If you're bringing darker eyeshadows and putting them closer to your nose, it's making your eyes more closed off and look smaller than they are. Nicole, not yes. to interrupt you, but I am watching the chat box and Mary, before we get too far, wants to know where is the best area to place the blush? Okay, if you smile like this, right here on the apples of your cheeks is going to be the best place to place your blush. And when you are blending it, you want to blend it back and up. That way you're getting it right along your cheekbone and just giving it a little bit more pop. So just smile and go back and up. And I will say, um, Nicole has some great tutorials on her Instagram page and we can link you after as well if you want to watch her um, apply some of her makeup, she will show you. But today we really wanted her to hit on some of the important points, especially with the season changing. Okay, so I'm gonna shut up and let you keep talking. I'll You're keep okay. watching for the questions. So if anyone has a question, drop it in the comment box and I will relate that to Nicole. Okay, so eyeshadow. Um, keeping the lighter colors on the inner corners of your eyes is also going to make your eyes appear more open. But you guys, don't be afraid to play with eyeshadow. I know that a lot of people are super afraid with eyeshadow and they're like, I don't know what to wear. You don't have to wear blue or purple. I mean, they have a lot of pretty, you know, neutral colors that you can do a smoky eye like I have with just some neutral colors. So don't be afraid. And you know what? It comes off. Get a makeup remover wipe and take it off if you don't like it. So don't be afraid of eyeshadow. Um, eyeliner is another thing. So I, like I said, I have smaller hooded eyes and eyeliner with hooded eyes. If you're lining the top of your eyes, you should not be doing eyeliner from here to here. It closes your eye and it makes it appear smaller. So on your top lid, you are gonna go from the corner to the middle of your lid. And then if you're doing it on the bottom with an actual eyeliner pen, you're gonna wanna go to the corner, like where your color of your eye starts. So only about a third of the way in. Um, and for me, I don't use a cream or a liner pen or anything like that anymore. All that I am using is eyeshadow for liner on the bottom. I do have eyelash extensions, so I don't wear eyeliner on the top anymore, but just for me on the bottom, it's just straight eyeshadow. Um, okay, next thing is bronzer. 
there are so many bronzers out there, but bronzer is amazing. Bronzer is not meant to be contour. Bronzer and contour are completely different. Bronzer is meant to give your face a sun-kissed glow. So anywhere the sun would naturally hit your skin is where you want to apply that. Um, sorry, bronzer. <laughs> okay. Um, also, with the bronzer, you can t super get a quick five-minute face makeup with bronzer and blush. So put on your moisturizer in the morning. Um, put your bronzer on. Put a little bit of blush on, a little bit of lipstick, and a little bit of eyes and you have a quick five minute face seriously that you can be out the door and go whether it's you know just to the grocery store or whatever I know everybody wants to feel like they have a little bit of something so you can do bronzer lip and cheek and a little bit of eye and be done in five minutes or you can do mascara and be done in seven <laughs> I was gonna say can the can the eye just be a mascara I think especially now a lot of us are in the home um, a lot of women aren't wearing a lot of makeup right now. So if they just do a moisturizer and a little blush, would you say the contour is more important or the bronzer with like a little light lip? Um, honestly, Amy, I think it just depends on like the look that you're going for. So you could do contour and a little bit of uh, cheeks and a light lip and adds, you know, a little bit of eyes and be done. Or you could just go vice versa and do it so that way. So it's really just balancing your skin tone and bringing some color back to your face. Is that the point of the? Pretty much. But I think also having more of a dewy look or a dewy finish on your skin. So putting moisturizer on first, just to help kind of give yourself a, you know, I think that that brings a lot of life back into your face by giving you a dewy glow. I, I just think it's so pretty. Okay. Um, also, shaving your face. How many of you shave your face? I know you guys I do. are <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, keep your hands so. in here. I want to tell her how many of us do. I do. Does anyone else? I know Mary said she does. Okay. Okay. I know, I know Rebecca does. Do, have you guys seen or heard of these tinkle razors? So they are seriously the best thing ever to shave your face. You get a three pack, you can buy it on, on Amazon or Walgreens or Walmart, whatever. And my favorite thing about shaving your face is so I will do it on Sundays and I'll pull my hair back and I usually start at the top of my ear and in a downward motion, I'm shaving my face and getting rid of all the peach fuzz. Um, I'm also going along my top lip, you know, if there's any on my chin, in between my brows. And the best part about the tinkle razors is that it's providing an exfoliation on your face too. It's not just getting rid of the hair. So by shaving your face, you are going to get a smoother makeup application. Your lotion's going to go on better. Your sunscreen's going to go on better. Everything is just going to like be like butter. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is sunscreen. You guys, every single day you need to be wearing sunscreen. It doesn't matter if it's cloudy and rainy outside, you need to be wearing sunscreen. Um, my absolute favorite sunscreen right now is this one is called Elta MD and I buy it on Amazon. It does, it's a little bit white, but it doesn't leave my face white and chalky like most sunscreens do. It doesn't leave your face oily either. So that is a great one that I am super loving right now. Okay, Nicole, wait a minute. I'm going to ask a question maybe some people are thinking. Do you put the sunscreen on before the moisturizer or do the moisturizer then the sunscreen? And then do you also use a makeup primer before you get? I mean, for me, I can be a clothing expert. And a lot of times, as much as I wear makeup, the steps can feel overwhelming. So can you tell me what phase would you use the sunscreen? Right. Okay. So when I get out of the shower, the, I mean, after I clean my ears, like the next thing I do is put my sunscreen on my face. And that way I feel like it has a little bit of time to soak in, which sunscreen needs to have time to soak in anyway, before you're doing anything else, whether you jump right in the pool or you're putting makeup on, it needs to have time to sit so your skin can absorb it. 
So I put my sunscreen on and then I usually, you know, will do my hair or I get dressed or whatever. And then I will come back to do my makeup. Generally in the morning, I don't wear moisturizer because I'm wearing sunscreen. Um, I usually only moisturize at night, but my skin also doesn't need an extra moisturizer in the morning. Um, okay, so then if mine did, you would want it to wait, sit 20 minutes or so, and then I could even 10. Right okay. But then yeah, the and then, right yeah, and then after that, then you can put your moisturizer on. And then if you use a primer, like a makeup primer, then that would be your time to put your makeup primer on after you put your moisturizer on. And usually with a makeup primer, I like to apply it with a beauty blender, which I don't know if any of you know what they are. They're like the teardrop sponges. So that's what I like to use to apply the makeup primer because I don't like a spray because of my eyelashes. So, and I feel like if you use a blender, it's helping it set into your face a little bit more too. Um, okay, next thing, setting spray, like we just talked about. You can also use that multiple ways. So if you wanted like a more vibrant eyeshadow, you can also spray your brush with your setting spray and do that before you put your eyeshadow on and you will get a more vibrant color. It's also going to help put that eyeshadow and make it not crease if you have problems with creasing eyeshadow. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, nightly skin routine. So every night you guys need to make sure that you're taking off your makeup. By sleeping in your makeup, you are 10 times, you guys, 10 times more likely to have more wrinkles. Yeah, so take off your makeup. Even if you're not washing your face, just get a makeup remover wipe, take off your makeup. So mine would be taking off my makeup, using my cleanser, and then I use a moisturizer. I only use a, like a facial mask once a week. And then I use a regular exfoliator. I like Rodan and Fields exfoliator. Um, or there's another one that's called The Cure, and you can buy that on Amazon. And I use, I use them both, really, and I use them every other day to exfoliate my face. So there's that. Um, okay, makeup brushes. I don't know if you use makeup brush, if you use a sponge, if you're using a beauty blender. All of them need to be cleaned at least twice a month. The main reason you want them to be cleaned is because it is going to get rid of any bacteria that you've got stored up on any of those brushes. Um, and you don't want extra breakouts and you don't want extra bacteria on your face. So it's gonna get rid of all of that. There are two that I know of that are an actual like cleaning spray. Um, mascara makes one and it's a dry spray and same with the e.l.f. brand. So you can just spray it directly on a paper towel. You're swirling your brush on there, but then your brush is dry and it is ready to use again. So you're not waiting overnight for them to dry. Or you can do it the old way with just a little bit of uh, mild soap and water. But making sure when you're washing your makeup brushes, you're not getting it up in the shaft of the brush. Otherwise you are uh, destroying the glue and your bristles are gonna come out. A lot quicker than they normally would. So make sure you're cleaning your makeup brushes. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, oh, just a skincare per seasons. So obviously in the winter time, everybody has a little bit drier skin. So for me in the winter time, I will wear a moisturizer and a sunscreen in the morning um, and then as well as moisturizing at night. But during the summer, I don't need that extra moisturizer in the morning. Um, and also, if you are not drinking enough water, obviously your skin's going to be more dehydrated, so you might need a little bit more, more moisturizer. And then in the winter time, you should exfoliate a little bit more regularly because your skin is drier. And last but not least, you guys, the plasma pen. So the plasma pen is a new procedure that you can do and there's no injections, there's no fillers, there's no chemicals. It is omitting the fourth state of matter. So what would happen is you would come in and see me and we would get a, the pen and we would make these little pinpoint marks on your face. And what it's doing is it's actually causing a burn on your face then that way your skin is gonna regenerate new collagen. 
the only way as we age, obviously we lose elasticity and collagen and our skin just sags with gravity. So the only way for your skin to produce new collagen is for you to damage the skin that you have, but you have to damage it enough so that you make new collagen. Does that make sense? I hope so. So you're causing a little bit of a burn and it will tighten up the skin. You guys, it is so amazing. When I am doing like a hooded eye and somebody wants to get rid of their eye bags on top of their eyes, I can physically see the skin tightening when I'm doing it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So you can seriously do this procedure anywhere on the body. You can, on your stomach, on your legs, on your arms, your neck, any crow's feet that you have, your lips, smile lines, it seriously, is amazing. Most people only need one treatment um, and your optimal results that you will see is at the end of 12 weeks. Obviously you're going to see results right after because I can see them while I'm doing them, but up to 12 weeks is how long it can take for your body to regenerate all that new collagen. But every day the results just keep getting better and better. As far as cost goes, it's about the same as Botox or fillers, just depending on the area that you get treated. But the best part about it is that the effects are longer lasting than Botox or fillers. I know some fillers can last up to six months, but usually Botox is only lasting about 12 weeks for the average person. But the plasma pen results, people are getting results for up to two years. But it does depend on how well you age and how well you take care of your skin, whether or not you're wearing sunscreen. Obviously sunscreen prevents wrinkles. So taking care of your skin is gonna help those results last longer. And you guys, some of these results that people are achieving with the plasma pen is, is like a mini facelift without actually having surgery. It is seriously so cool. So Amy can get your guys' info if you want more information about the plasma pen and then that way I can steer you in the right direction to find somebody who does the plasma pen for you. You need to make sure that if you're getting a plasma pen treatment, they are using an FDA approved device, that they've done their training and they are approved to do the plasma pen. There are plasma pens you can buy on Amazon. I've seen them for like $90. I'm like, why? No, what, what, what is this? So anywho, um, I hope you guys got a little bit of insight and yeah. Do you guys have questions? I think, yeah, we should open it up for questions. And then Nicole, I don't know if you have any of the brushes you use or product near in case they want to see what you're talking about. Um, but you guys feel free to um, go ahead and unmute and just ask Nicole questions, whether it's on techniques. I actually learned something because I do my eyeliner all the way across and I just learned that I'm doing it wrong. So <laughs> don't be embarrassed to ask a question. This is why we're doing this. We all have had certain things ingrained in us, no different than in fashion. You know, we used to have that um, rule of your hemline has to match your tights, has to match your shoes. So we were navy blue from the shoulders all the way to our toes. And, you know, those are certain things that we learn generationally. And a lot of times, like Nicole said, sometimes it's embarrassing to walk into a place and feel like I need to start all over or the products that I've had are cover girl that I've had for 15 years. We've all done but that. They're so. not they're not bad products no. though, Amy. I mean no, but it's, I, you are I not doing your eyeliner wrong. It's just there's a better no, But I'm to gonna do try it. it halfway. So feel free to unmute, ask any question you want. She's here for QA and we're excited about that. Well, I'm just that... excited about that dog on plasma pin. <laughs> Well, it is so amazing. I'm serious. The plasma pen is, yes, I, I can't even say enough good things about it. So if you're in Utah or wherever, like close to Utah, I'm your girl. Hey. <laughs> oh, I was also going to say this. I was also going to say this. If you guys are interested in some of Nicole's favorite products that she uses, because she's mentioned several that she's gotten on Amazon and different mm -hmm. things. Um, 
give me your email or comment and that you want information. And would you be willing to type something up so that I can share it with them, Nicole, or reference links yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. I will do an email and I'll include the pictures and where I, where I can find them or where you can find them and do that way for you guys. Okay. Um, I did just want to show really quick and mascara makeup is so amazing because it comes in this compact right here and all of your colors are just like here and you don't need bottles of foundation. You don't need jars of bronzer or anything like that. Your eyeshadow, everything magnets into a compact and it's simple and it travels well. You just throw that baby in your purse and you are good to go. Like, well, That's and it. this is not a mascara advertisement, but it's my favorite make makeup too. I mean, I have fallen in love with it. I still have some of my um, Bare Minerals shadows that I use. Um, I still have like some lip stains that are my favorite that are Maybelline. So what I love specifically about the mascara products is I can use them with other things that I have and they really do travel great. So yeah, most definitely everything can be used with something else that you're already using. Which but I've been at Nicole's house and I know that she does use these off brand um, products as well, which is what I love because you guys know I use Monistat for my makeup primer. So I'm all about Amy. <laughs> <laughs> that drives me insane. <laughs> okay, now that you've brought up primer. No, I don't what, know if stat would work, but what is makeup primer? I'm an old broad. We didn't do primers when I wore a lot of makeup. What is that? Okay, so a primer is just something you're going to put on your face before you do your makeup, and it is going to help your makeup stay in place longer and go on better. So is a moisturizer considered a primer? Is that... Not really, um, because mainly moisturizers, if you put your makeup on without letting it sit or depending on the moisturizer that you're using, most of the time your makeup is just going to like slide right off. So a primer is kind of dries it out a little bit. And I, I, I honestly, the best way to explain it for me is it feel like it makes it a little bit sticky and you put your makeup on and I just feel like it goes on so smoothly. Amy, okay, what'd you I'm, go get? I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Kill me. But it's like, the reason I love this is it's really, there's no, it's not greasy at all, but I didn't use it either for years, Mary, and I tried all kinds of different, I've bought expensive um, MAC primer, I've bought Unique primer, but what it does for me, because I have very porous skin and I have some scarring, is I feel like the primer smooths some of my pores out and then my foundation goes on really well. So it doesn't, I mean. So I, hold it up again. I didn't see what you held up. What sorry. Are, you are you serious? Is that your <laughs> monostat? Is that yes. your monostat? <laughs> yeah. One of my mom's caregivers uses that as a primer too, just FYI. Yeah. I'm just so, saying. Uh, Mary, the other thing that I would say about primer, I kind of liken it to the windshield on your car. So it's like the last step to your skincare regimen. And whether you put makeup on or not, it provides a barrier to everything around you that's hitting your face throughout the day. And so um, it's like having a windshield instead of driving driving around in your convertible and letting bugs hit your face. That's yeah, Rebecca, that's point. a great. I've, I've, I've never even thought of it that way, Rebecca, because I do think since I've been using primer and primer in general, like I said, I've tried all kinds of different products. And the reason I started using Monistat is I'll try anything once. And I found it on Instagram. Um, and I felt like it was doing the same thing for me, but my skin has cleared up a little bit and it's gotta be that idea that I'm not getting as many toxins and dirt right into my pores. One other thing I and did want to touch days on. That I don't... Oh. You're I was okay. just gonna Go say ahead. on days that I don't wear makeup, 
I put a primer on. I, so, I mean, it doesn't, yeah, wear it every single day. It's just the, the, the last step of your skincare regimen. Hmm. That's interesting. Nicole, what were you yeah. going to say? No, I just, I forgot. I wanted to touch on, you said porous skin. So another way to tell if you have the wrong color of actual foundation color on your skin is if you see that it's accentuating your pores or if you feel like it's going on making your skin look drier or flaky or cakey, um, or I call it texture. If you're seeing any kind of texture on your skin when you're putting your foundation on, you have the wrong color. And 90% of the time, that color is too light, so you need to shade up. Um, really quick, since you are um, a makeup artist and you specialize in color matching, since these ladies are here, if they wanted to be color matched by you, do you have to be in person? No, no, you what can do a virtual color match. So what you would do is you would take a makeup free selfie. I don't share your selfies. I don't post your selfies. I just need to see your face facing a window. So I need a window directly in front of you. And you're going to stand about three feet away from the window. So you're not getting washed out from the light. And then you just send me that selfie and I'll color match you and simple yeah. as that. So you guys, Nicole oh. lives about two hours away. Well, probably about an hour and a half away from me because she's in no almost Northern Utah. Um, and so when the seasons change, I will have her color match me again because my pigment changes. I get really red. And I also just, I'm not the best at sunblock be, for that reason. I want to know which one she's using um, because I feel like it gets chalky. So I, that's one thing that I need to be better at is the sunblock. So I'm definitely, I'm about ready to have her color match me again. Yes, we need to. A couple of things. Um, speaking of the Elta, uh, Elta brand sunblock, I've just recently been, exposed to, um, the, it's a 35 rather than a 40, but it's a tinted uh, sunblock and it is wonderful. I mean, it just goes on. It's just beautifully smooth and and it, it's not a tint that you even notice you have a tint on your face. I just wanted to throw that out. That Ulta brand is, is Ulta, really good. Like, Ulta as in U-L-T-A? No, it's Oh, L L L Did I say, I'm sorry, Elta. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And it's sold at dermatologists and all. So, so um, they, they are online right. on Amazon. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I did too. Yeah. 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 The I other did. thing really with like, like it. it's, it's amazing. But the other thing too that you can do for a tinted sunscreen, if you want, is you can use um, sunscreen and a little bit of your foundation, uh -huh. mix them together. And there you go. Like mm -hmm. that's another quick, easy coverage and add a little bit of blush and you are good to go. Yeah, cool. And then so I also- Nicole, wanted... what brand of makeup do you sell? Hey, see. It, it is called- hey, Mascara sorry, I was mowing makeup. grass. <laughs> what? It is what? called Mascara Beauty. Mascara oh, Beauty. Oh, okay, okay. But we don't actually sell eye mascara. Yeah, right. that was gotcha. my question. Yeah, that was my question. Hey, sorry, yeah. Susan. No, no, no. That was my question as well as where we can get this mascara makeup. I've never heard of it before. Didn't know anything about it. Um, so from, from me. If All you right. guys are if you guys are interested in the the line of makeup that she uses, mm -hmm. um, I can connect you to Nicole. Okay. Um, one thing that's fun, Nicole. I want you to see. So it says S. Cooper, but that's Susie. And then Susan and Mary, they all grew up together. And Susan and Susie both live in Louisiana and Mary is in Texas. And then Amanda in the middle is in Utah. And then we have Kansas and I'm not sure where Cindy is from, but so it's so fun to see everybody come together. And that's what's great too, because you do have different climates and your skin is gonna be different based on humidity or lack thereof, like in Utah. So that's yeah. one of the reasons um, Rebecca and I felt this was so important because Utah is getting ready to be even drier in the winter than it is in the summer. 
Um, Kansas, oh. your weather is kind of all over. You don't, Rebecca, you don't have a lot of humidity, right? She's, she I, don't, I don't think she does. Yeah, but the Louisiana ladies are gonna have much more um, yeah. humidity. So some of these products I feel are just really important to speak about and learn about. Um, so, and then Amanda in the middle is actually an esthetician as well, so. Oh, you are? I just put her on the spot. I haven't practiced since 2008, so, well, 2009, oh, okay. so. Okay. But she's like, I mean, are you- Wasn't that just yesterday? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, I have a question, if Susan's through, I don't wanna interrupt her again. Um, I use a Bobbi Brown primer, but it has an SPF of 50. Is that a good product? Yeah, I mean, Bobbi Brown, is that's a good product. And if you're still using it, there's no reason to change, especially if you like it. Um, and where you have a built-in primer and SPF together, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, when I don't wear any makeup, I wear the Elta MD, like for mowing, like I was earlier. Um, but I like that because it's a primer and sunscreen in one, so it saves me a step before I put on my makeup. Mm -hmm. But I, I only use their makeup products. I don't use their skincare products. For the Elta MD or for the Bobbi Brown? For the Bobbi Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't ever tried their skincare products either. Yeah, I, I use, um, it's a company called Truara that supposedly works with the microbiome of the body. So that's what I use for skincare right now. Will you put that in the comments, Susie? Uh, sure. What, well, where will I do type that the name at? of it in the chat box? Oh, yeah, yeah, I sure will. Except for I'm cutting bacon right now. Oh, so. well, then you can just let me know later. And I'm cooking you... dinner for someone tonight, so I'm kind of multitasking. That's okay. Um, hey, I'm leaving Tony's right now. I'm going to wash my hands. <laughs> you, know, you know what, Nicole, uh -oh. so put an email together for us with her, some I of lost her you. products. So if you want to text me the name of that, Susie, I can also have her add that as something that we talked about. Okay, yeah, I sure will, I sure will. Rebecca is also a makeup expert, so do you have anything oh. to add? Uh, well, I just, I am very thankful that you're on here with us today and sharing your wisdom, Nicole. I thank you, I, I just, um, I appreciate everything that you've said. And for me, one of the things that um, a lot of people forget to put on is blush. And I feel like that's like one of the biggest easy things you can do to instantly brighten up your face and then call more attention to your eyes. And so I like the fact that you um, kind of talked about blush and getting that. And hopefully if you're not already doing contouring, you're gonna go home or go back to your bathroom and start trying things out because it makes a huge difference in your face. Just remember that anything that you put dark on, it makes it recessed and anything that you put light on kind of it brings it forward. So um, pretend like your face is a work of art, which it is, and just play around. I know uh, Nicole talked about having hooded eyes and I have deep set eyes. So we kind of put Me our too. makeup in opposite um, places. So just know your, um, your eye type and shape and how to best accentuate that. And if you need help, I know Nicole can help you with all different eye shapes. You can reach out to me, but, um, yeah, we just want you to look great and feel great. And our skin is something that we can't just trade in for uh, a better model. So to me, skincare is so very, very important. So, well, and just like, our clothes make us feel better when we actually put something on. I think even just washing our faces and putting on a great moisturizer and just having a touch of color really wakes us up. And I used to, my great, my grandmother was on the ball and she never went anywhere without 
the wrong shade of bright pink lipstick, <laughs> but it was on her face because that is what made her feel good. And it didn't matter. She would just brush her hair out if she was in a hurry, but she would have that bright pink lipstick on and half the time it was on her teeth, but she felt great, you know? So I think that's the biggest goal for um, Rebecca and I doing these collaborations on Fridays is we just want you guys to remember that you have value, to remember no matter how hard. I know my ladies in Louisiana, you've been dealing with crazy weather and um, we just want you to know that you're loved and that you have value and you are worth that extra five minutes. For sure, <laughs> everybody deserves the extra five minutes. Yeah. So one more really insane question. I hate foundation. I have always hated foundation. I found a brush on product that is supposed to be a combo of foundation and powder. That's what I typically use over the moisturizer and it works for me, but is that, is that something that mascara has or? Will you touch on the fact that it's a cream makeup, Nicole? And yeah, so that question for her. Yeah, so mascara is a cream based makeup system. So their foundation, their contour, mm -hmm. their blush. Um, basically, everything can serve as multi purpose. I mean, you can use that lip and cheek colors on your eyes for eyeshadows if you want. It. But it's cream based. Um, it goes on so smooth, just like butter. We don't have a powder. We have a setting powder, a pressed setting powder. Um, but other than that, we don't have powders. Um, we do have powder eyeshadows, but other than that, we don't have but any it's powder. Light. It's, it's not cakey and it's not heavy. So if you're using a powder that you love, Mary, then you can stick with that and you could get just the contouring and the blush from you know, anywhere, really, it's the technique in how you do it. And so if you guys would ever be interested for an actual tutorial, I'm sure Nicole would love to join us and come back and do that. Or you can follow her on Instagram and she does a lot of tutorials there. But it's more the technique and like Rebecca said, you're shading to create the contour in your face, you're shading or you're highlighting to give your natural shape of your face, those highlights and those low lights that you would naturally have when the sun hits your face. And so I think a lot of times our faces look very flat. If you look at all of us from the 80s when we did our makeup, we were all very flat and most of the time too bright because our foundations um, not shaded properly for the faces that we had. So. I know I look back, my eyebrows were super thin. That's one thing I want to say really quick, you guys. I'm blonde and my eyebrows are horrible. So I did go get mine microbladed, which is basically like a temporary tattoo. And then I will fill them in. It does hurt like heck, I'm not going to lie. Um, did you get yours microbladed? So if you don't know how to um, fill your eyebrows in properly, that would be one other thing that you may want to think about. And when I'm in a hurry and I want my five minute face, it also just having my eyebrows kind of tattooed on, I feel like my face has shape without really doing a lot. So that's another thing that has changed me completely and they follow your natural brow line. Um, which you should do with makeup anyway. And another thing that you can do with brows, because your brows just really frame your face beautifully. If you are not um, into pain and you're looking for maybe a less permanent solution than microblading, which if I live closer to somewhere, I would totally get microbladed. But um, I just have my hair gal tent my eyebrows every time I'm there. So um now towards the tail end of my, you know, I'm usually there every eight weeks. So at about six weeks, the tent on my eyebrows is kind of running out. And so I've got to fill them in then. But I have caterpillars for eyebrows that have to be whipped into shape all the time. And so if you have thick eyebrows that you don't necessarily need to add fullness to, um, you could have your hairdresser tent them as well. Mm -hmm. 
And if you don't want to do any of that, you can use eyeshadow to film in. So I yeah. do have my microbladed, but then I just use um, a smaller brush and I use eyeshadow and I just fill them in. So. And Bobby hey. Brown has um, a eyebrow kit and also Anastasia Beverly Hills. And it was, I, my filling kit is the Anastasia Beverly Hills. And it was kind of expensive, but I've had it forever. It takes a long time for it to go away. So if you're not even sure, like, and Nicole could also probably recommend when she color matches you what eyeshadow she would recommend to fill in your eyebrows. So, yeah. I have a quick so, question on the blush also though. Like I have mild rosacea and I have to be so careful because I end up with super pink cheeks and I don't use a lot. So I end up going without because my cheeks have a tendency to be red and rosy anyway. So. See, and I have a couple of clients who have rosacea and they kind of feel the same way that they already have red skin. So usually what I recommend, the color that I recommend is more of a nude color. And I know it sounds kind of funny, but once you actually put the nude color on with your undertone anyway, it is really, really pretty. Yeah, because okay. I have that too, Susie, and I use like a darker, like go more for, forget the pink. I'm not a pink broad anyway, right. but yeah. I go down like to a mauve more color. It kind of tones it down. Right, which I tried. To, right, that sounds good. And also, Nicole, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't there shades of foundation that either have more of a yellow tone to them or a different tone? And can you speak to what that would, like if you're really red, what tone you need? Because that's also a question I have. Yeah, so foundations, like Amy said, are yellow based or green based, basically. So you kind of have to think of the color wheel. So red and green go together, they're Christmas colors. So if you have red skin, you're going to want a foundation with more green undertones because that's going to calm that down and cool it out. If you have more purple skin, like purple under your eyes or purple from your rosacea at all, you're going to want something that's more yellow based. Um, so that is kind of a good, kind of a good rule of thumb. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. So overall, um, I think it's important to speak to an expert, whether it's Nicole or at the beauty counter, or Rebecca or whoever you know, um, I can definitely get you in touch with Nicole though. She's great to work with one-on-one, -on -one. Um, mm -hmm. but it's no different than us coming in and talking to you about style. We've all been buying clothes our entire lives, but sometimes it's that little um, trade secret, like a little sleeve roll or a front tuck that Nicole and people that specialize in makeup just like the little green tones, I would have probably bought the wrong shade because I didn't understand that. So to speak to somebody who can help me look as natural as possible with a little bit of work, like hardly any, you know, just to do a natural face because you guys know I'm dirty most of the time and I need to be able to come and go a lot. So I love a light natural face when I'm not doing shows and for her to have been able to teach me how to do that, it changed everything because half the time I don't have makeup on but if I can do that little tiny bit of blush contour and lip um I just feel like I can run in the grocery store and not look like um hell in a handbasket you know so um it's all those little things that come from the industry of where you're trying to go I think all you have to do is look at Nicole and know good god <laughs> she can help me Yes. <laughs> you are so nice, Mary. <laughs> no, I'm truthful. <laughs> I'm quite honest. <laughs> well, thank you. But you guys, more than anything, what I wanted you to take away from today is I don't want you to be afraid of makeup. I don't want you to be um, worried about what you've been taught in the past or what you're used to. It's okay to step out of your square box and it's okay to maybe get a circle 
you know, so just, just have fun with it. And like I said, it all comes off. They make soap and makeup remover wipes for that reason. So don't be afraid. Okay, you guys, if there's not any more questions, we actually went longer today, which I love that you guys had so many questions for her. That tells Rebecca and I that this was added value to you. So we can't wait to, um, Rebecca, what are we doing next Friday? Do you want to talk about that really quick? Yes, next Friday on Style RX, it's going to be street style. So we're going to be mixing things up and having a lot of fun. Uh, don't miss it because you're going to be able to, I don't know, maybe play dress up the dolly with us uh, as we're bringing some stuff for you. But it's going to be a lot of fun, just some different ways to wear pieces unconventionally. And you're going to see just a little bit more of our own personal styles as well. Yeah. So... Okay, you guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Nicole, for being our guest. You were amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Okay.